The officials, Higgins, Kitts, Greenwood, and we're ready to go in San Antonio. Arizona in the blue uniforms with the first opportunity. This is their point guard, Jason Gardner from Indianapolis, Indiana. Richard Jefferson from Phoenix on the outside wing. Michael Wright played in Chicago and almost a turnover. It is over and back as Marcus Griffin of Illinois forced the defensive play. If you're Arizona, play forward. You can't beat Illinois by turning your back to them all the time. When you're playing against an aggressive opponent like Illinois, you got to hit them first. You have to initiate the contact, make them play basketball, earn the respect. Look who's on, Frank. Williams right off the bat. This was a defensive strategy by Lute Olsen. Brings size, strength, and athleticism. Three-second violation. Richard Jefferson standing over Frank Williams. He couldn't see anything develop. And the big men on the weak side for Illinois camping in the lane. So that's the first big uh, coaching move as Lute Olsen has put the 6'7 Richard Jefferson, a wingman, on Frank Williams, the star guard of Illinois. Here's Jefferson offensively. He draws uh, Sergio McLean. Beautiful screen by Lauren Woods. Gilbert Arenas gets Arizona in front, 3-0. Three-point shooting will be huge for Arizona. When they're on top of their game, this is a magnificent offensive team. They can struggle mightily, though, in a half-court set. Around the perimeter of the Illini, inside to Griffin. Double team, batted away. Gardner up with it for the Wildcats. Jefferson wants it, takes it inside. And, whoa, he misses the dunk, reclaims it, and it's batted away. Loose ball, <laughs> my goodness, somebody grab it. And finally, a held ball possession arrow to Illinois. A play Richard Jefferson has to finish. Down the lane, the defense waiting above the basket. Now, you scoffed at me Friday night when I said about this guy's athleticism. That was a pretty good what? picture of talent there. <laughs> Where was that arm on the rim, please? Pressure in the backboard, and Arenas forces the turnover as Brian Cook loses possession out of bounds. That's three turnovers committed by Illinois in a minute and a half. Earlier today, Leslie Visser in a report talked about the movie Gladiator. If you're Arizona, be the be Maximus, be the guy that calls everyone together and says, hey guys, we're going out there against them. Tough, tough opponent. If we play as a team, if we play with our heads, we can win this. That's the challenge for Arizona. Lauren Woods to Michael Wright, the Chicagoan, and he is fouled underneath. In fact, uh, Michael Wright said that he played against this Peoria Manual powerhouse in Illinois four times, all four years in high school. And the three men who play for Illinois today beat his team four times, even when he had Kevin Garnett as a, as a teammate in Chicago. That was at Farragut Academy at Chicago, Illinois. A one-year teammate of Kevin Garnett. Now Michael Wright, who did not take a single free throw Friday night early to the line here. And that will be huge because even though Illinois will foul a lot, they'll come to the bench with a lot of talent, a lot of depth and beef. Michael Wright has got to be the guy along with Eugene Edgerson, who sets the physical tempo and pace inside for the Wildcats. Good free shoot, throw shooting team, Arizona, and they take the early lead, 5-0. Pressure in the backcourt. Trying to speed up the tempo for Arizona. Want to get it open court. Now they change defenders. A little bit of a zone defense. Make them think. Bradford back outside to Cook. Corey Bradford is their three-point shooter, and he guns and hits. They feel if they can get three threes from him, they'll win this game. He was one for 13 on Friday night from outside the arc. And they really need good production, Illinois, from Cook and Griffin, who had subpar performances. Lauren Woods on the baseline, and timeout called by Woods to save the possession. 17-43, left in the opening half, Arizona by two. Uh, felt cornered, felt pounced. The poise of Lute Olsen, who actually fed into that a little bit of his own, and now Richard Jefferson in trouble. And there's the turnover, five seconds. Oh, oh no, he called time before. So we, without a second news, we're timing out. <laughs> 
Arizona has burned two timeouts maintaining possession in the first two and a half minutes of action. A testament to the great defense of Illinois. Arenas on the run. Well done. 7-3. Arenas has five quick points. He averaged 16 on the season. The beautiful thing about his Arenas is his ability to go in people's face and to just jump out there and say, I'm coming at you. His matchup with Sergio McLean. Now you got Gilbert Arenas playing the defensive small forward. He's going to have to keep Sergio off the boards, keep out of foul trouble, Gilbert Arenas, and still have enough left on the offensive end to deliver for Lute Olsen. Jefferson again, Hawking Williams. Cook from outside, the big man can shoot the three. Williams battles for the loose ball, taken away by Jefferson. You gotta get on the ground if you're Arizona. Arenas holds it up. And the steal by Corey Bradford, and Bradford takes it the other way. Lauren Wood stepped away from the basket. Nice transition opportunity, Corey ba Bradford creating space for the running big man, Brian Cook. A lot of talent, Cook is a key here. Illinois coaches really feel that Cook could be huge for Illinois. In the post and the foul will go against Cook. Hand in the back as the pass came in to Lauren Woods. Dribbling away from the basket to create space from your big men. Arizona, poor transition defense, but the athleticism of Brian Cook, last year's freshman of the year in the Big Ten. Exemplary player and a superb passer as well, Cook. The big left-hander, Lauren Woods in the post at 7-1. Gardner takes it in, brings it back out to Arenas. Arenas, oh, using the glass. Seven quick points for Gilbert Arenas. Gilbert Arenas getting bumped on the perimeter. No calls there. Gilbert Arenas freezing the guys down low. Not a lot of big shot blockers, but intimidating physical presence nonetheless. Bradford is short. Cook over the top with a rebound and the score. It's 9-7, to seven, Arizona. Cook with four. Long pass deflected out of bounds to Arizona. Gilbert Arenas makes a fine play, but if you're Lauren Woods, you cannot let Brian Cook take this rebound over your head. Gilbert Arenas just too tough inside. If you're ever going to win a championship, if you're ever going to beat Illinois, you've got to be able to control your defensive backboard. Lauren Woods inexcusably just allows Brian Cook. Brian Cook is shorter, younger, has less physical talent than Lauren Woods. Lauren Woods just pushed out of the way that time. No way that should ever happen to this senior leader for Arizona. Possibly playing his final game. Jason Gardner to Jefferson. Jefferson had it batted away, but right to Gardner. Arenas, he's hot. Not this time, well short, and it's Sergio McLean the other way for the Illini. Ball was deflected by Frank Williams, a great defense, and a traveling violation on Sergio. Four turnovers early against Illinois. Four and a half minutes into this first half. It was the turnovers Friday night that killed Kansas. Never even allowed them to get into the game. They couldn't get a shot up. But this great defense that Illinois plays. A whistle away from the ball and elbow signal into the back against uh, one of the interior Illini. Reggie Greenwood right on top of the play. Brian Cook has his second foul early, so Cook, who fouled out Friday night, will take an early seat. And Lucas Johnson, number 22, and 21, Robert Archibald, off the bench on that front line for Illinois. Bill Self over there congratulating Brian Cook for the physical play. You've got to play with your head, though. You cannot pick up silly fouls. Gardner, the point guard, and it's stolen. Marcus Griffin. Williams down the middle, and it's stolen back by Arenas. Good hustle by the sophomore guard. Collision, no call in the backcourt. Gardner for three. Rebound, Lucas Johnson. Lucas Johnson having an impact immediately. Gardner's got to come alive offensively. He's playing tentative. He's playing with his back to the basket. Gilbert Arenas is everywhere. Another steal for Arenas. Johnson chases and fouls. No basket. First foul on Lucas Johnson. Referees right in there. There was tons of confrontations in a very physical, near-violent affair in the game at the United Center in December. 
the zone that Gilbert Arenas is in right now. That little hesitation there, the hard foul from behind. No place in basketball for that. Come with an elbow to the back of the head on a breakaway layup. Arenas at the line, 72% on the year. And we'll see our first changes from Lute Olsen as Justin Welsa, 30, and 33, Gene Edgerson uh, will replace Woods and Wright. You will see substitutions on virtually every dead ball from Illinois. Bill Self likes to do this against teams that want to run like Arizona. Bill Self wants to slow this tempo down. And in college basketball, where you can substitute after a made free throw, keeps the other team from getting the ball in and going in transition early. Gilbert Arenas with nine points off the opening bell and just five and a half minutes of play. Here's the trapping, pressing defense by Arizona. Can the big men for Illinois handle the ball? We know this guy can. Bradford for three. He's one for three now, and Edgerson immediately rips down a rebound. Gardner on the run. Gardner has to play sharper. Jefferson with Johnson. Gardner and Sean Harrington now in for Illinois, and a beautiful move inside by Arenas. He's doing it all. 11 points. Back court. Phenomenal tandem here with Arenas and Gardner. Spread the floor. Get Illinois back on their heel if Illinois can, if Arizona, excuse me, can hope to pull the big upset. Inside, tapped away by Edgerson. 18 seconds on the clock. Because Arenas is so hot from the outside, Corey Bradford has to stay with him. He gets caught behind the fine pick by Justin Wessel. Too easy with the pinpoint precise passing of Jason Gardner. No pressure on the ball, Illinois. Bell Self will not be happy. Lucas Johnson, nice bounce pass to Marcus Griffin. A little too strong, and little Jason Gardner up to pull down the rebound. 13-7 Arizona lead. A lot of toughness early by the Wildcats. Can they sustain it? When you know the push and shove will come from Illinois as it grinds down. Arenas taking Harrington. Well off the mark, however, and it's out of bounds to Illinois. Here comes Damir Krapalia from uh, Rockford, Illinois, Sarajevo. He makes his first appearance, number 33. And uh, number four for Arizona, Luke Walton at 6'8". Their top uh, reserved in the front court. No pressure on the ball in the back court for Arizona. Arizona's got plenty of speed. They might want to try getting up, see what kind of handles Corey Bradford has. Foul inside Arizona. Luke Walton picks up an early first foul for Arizona and to the line goes Sean, uh, uh, Robert Archibald. Archibald from Scotland. His dad was a national player there on the Scottish national team and as a youngster uh, was good enough that he was a starter in the under 23 team at the age of 17. Has his own kilts. Occasionally will uh, entertain his teammates <laughs> and they like to tease him about that but Robert don't call me Bobby that's my dad Archibald playing with a very severely sore back this is a guy who's got bulging discs has not had operations at this time they don't think that surgery is necessary at this point for this fine young talent the best rebounder who doesn't start in the Big Ten what a game he's got Robert Archibald Frank Williams, after a brief rest, is in. Bradford out for Illinois. Archibald hits them both, and it's 13-9 Arizona. Free throws will be a huge factor today. In the two games that these squads have already played, it was 58 free throws shot in the game at Lahaina, 60 free throws shot in the game in Chicago. Over the top to Arenas. Beautifully timed pass. 13 for Arenas. Walton able to see over the top a good 6 8 6 9 and a nice passing touch able to keep the ball moving on the perimeter for Arizona inside Archibald and Edgerson with a body call for the foul here is the sophomore Luke Walton beautifully fed Arizona has got Illinois right now back on their heels and if you're ever going to beat an Illinois team or a Michigan State team these Big Ten power teams you've got to get them back underneath the basket. The only way you do that is by playing forward. Push the ball, attack them, get them on their heels. Arenas with a big hand from 
the Arizona contingent across the way as he comes out. Jefferson back in. Sergio McLean has it batted away by Jefferson. Shot missed by Archibald and the foul. Propalia, the Villanois. Eugene Edgerson, senior on the team. Last night, Eugene Edgerson got up at a team meeting and said, guys, I was on the 97 championship team, and I know how special it is to get to that Final Four to win it all. We've got the talent. We've got the spirit. We've got it all. But it's going to have to be 40 minutes of war out there on the court. It was the most emotional speech maybe in the history of Arizona basketball. In the history? Oh, it was big. Walton outside to Wessel. There's that closeout pressure defense. You got a give and go in that situation. Wessel to Jefferson, although I think the pass was intended for Walton. Good ball movement, Arizona up against the shot clock now. Seven. Gardner for three. And Archibald with a rebound and a foul. Both Wessel and Gardner colliding. Poor decision by Jason Gardner. Not on the shot. He had to go against the shot clock. But it was Jason Gardner who raced in there thinking he could get the long rebound. You've got to have backcourt coverage. Lou Olson says, you've got to think, guys. There's no room for error here. Size in the backcourt now. You've got Richard Jefferson at about 6'7", over Frank Williams, the Big Ten Player of the Year, Luke Walton guarding Sergio McLean at the small forward position. Papalia left alone over Edgerson, not there, and Jefferson with the easy rebound. 15-9, the Wildcats lead with 11.45 left in this opening half. Walton makes his move into the lane and then back out to Gardner. Jefferson pulls up and scores, plus one. So many great stories on this Arizona team, really both teams, the camaraderie that exists between the, the squads, the mutual respect after two brutal, vicious wars. Richard Jefferson, roommate of Luke Walton, best of friends since the day they met. They both were on a recruiting trip to Tucson, met each other, really liked the way each other worked in the court and off the court and they decided at the time let's both go here three-pointer for Richard Jefferson as Arizona doubles the lead here early 11 33 left in the half but how do you bust the big guys how do you come out and take on this Illinois team we've seen it Clark Kellogg's told us about guards all turning along Juan Dixon we saw him do it against Stanford yesterday Jason Wade Archibald inside gets fouled there with Gilbert Arenas leading the charge it's the Wildcats early Lauren Woods with a foul for Arizona. Now make it Lamont Frazier just into the game. Frazier, a senior from Los Angeles. That's four team fouls on Arizona and six for Illinois. Archibald, who hit his first two. Get ready for the final four with player comparisons, tournament statistics, uh, matchup breakdowns, and a lot more at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. With his 13 points, uh, Arenas, uh, that's a mis misrepresentation of zero on his back. <laughs> Maybe it's an O for outstanding. Don't know why that they're fronting Robert Archibald down low. Haven't seen really the kind of game that would require a double team. Nice aggressive play, Sergio McLean. Got the offensive rebound. A second chance into Griffin. Woods got a piece of it, and Arenas then calls it in for Arizona. Arenas is in the zone. Good job by Lou Olson. Get him right back in there. Can't believe he took him out in anyway. Arenas left alone for three. Oh, my! It's the Gilbert Arena Show. 16 points in nine minutes. In Arizona's most recent loss, when they lost at UCLA, Gilbert Arenas carried the team 24 second-half points in the face of every single Bruin who ever played at Westwood. Left alone is Williams. He can't hit the three. Second chance on the rebound. McLean underneath. Won't fall for the Illini. And up comes the man, Arenas. Terrible pass. It was deflected and Harrington the other way for Illinois to Williams. Four spacing on the break. And a Beautiful great opportunity pass. there. 
Archibald with the rebound, and he's fouled. Gilbert Arenas sizzling offensively, stroking jumpers. No one even near him. Couldn't touch him. He might get singed. <laughs> Keep him on the other side of the court. That was his first foul and sends Archibald back to the line with a score 21 10 Arizona. But the offensive rebounding of Illinois starting to take its toll right now time and time again the push the scrum underneath the basket Where's Lauren Woods? Where's Michael Wright? Where's Richard Jefferson? Luke Walton, Justin Wesson, Eugene Edgerson? That's six guys. You can't have all six out there. Well, they're going to have their time. They're going to have their chance. Here come two of the Illini starters back in as Brian Cook and Corey Bradford give uh, Harrington and Griffin a rest. Terrifically talented player Robert Archibald, ambidextrous in the basket area. Skilled, soft touch, and here's that substitution after the made free throw. This allows this allows Illinois' defense to get set. This is not an offensive-defensive substitution. Self does this intentionally to slow the game down and allow his physically uh, powerful defense to take hold. Demir Propalia in for Archibald as Frazier setting up the offense, and this is the offense arenas. Lamont Frazier caught in the air. Wright takes it in tough, but they're going to call a foul on Wright, pushing with the front arm. His first. Michael Wright, such a disciplined, dedicated, committed worker. Flawlessly sculpted physically. Incredibly intelligent. Top student for Arizona. Loves these tough battles. Had the game winner at Stanford in the Collins twins' face with three seconds to go at Maples when the place was rocking, when there was no earthquake going on. Inside to Kropalia, knocked away, and a foul. And this will go against Richard Jefferson, his first. And 17 fouls now for the Wildcats, so the bonus in effect for Illinois on the next uh, Illini foul. Will send Arizona to the bonus. Propalia just an outstanding athlete. What a story it is. He, his parents made the last flight out in 1992 out of Sarajevo. They closed the airport for two and a half years. Came eventually to the United States. Knew no English as a sophomore in high school. His high school coach would give him a word each day, an English word. There's another offensive rebound, and Arenas. Knocks it out of bounds with a kick. He, he said he not only learned that way, but he learned much of his English listening to Chicago Cubs games. <laughs> Goodness, Harry Carey, Steve Stone taught this young lad English. Holy cow. 21 12. Illinois trying to cut into the Arizona lead. Arizona is not defending their defensive backboards on missed free throws. That's inexcusable. Turnover. No, no, it's deflected by Woods. No, Woods with a good closeout defensively. But if you can't get rebounds on missed free throws from the other team, how do you expect to win? See, the Illini not shooting well. They've missed their last seven. Sergio McLean sets up Cook for the easy bank and it rattles out. Right back to Kripalia. He scores. Again, second chances for the Illini. The punishing pace that Illinois plays with. The loyalists from Champaign on their feet. Jefferson for three. Rebound Kripalia. A change of momentum here. Somebody's got to get a rebound for Arizona. Lauren Woods is getting pushed around. Offensive rebound, six for Illinois, one. Lauren Woods can't save, or can he? Did he call time on his way out of bounds? No, the call was he was already on the sidelines out of bounds. Back comes Lucas Johnson for Illinois. McLean out. Lauren Woods trying to call timeout, jumping in the air. He was there. I don't like this rule, do I you? I think they've got to change this rule. It's a, 
not a good idea. And eventually they're going to change the rule on substituting after made free throws the way that Illinois keeps abusing this and, and, and slowing the game down to keep it from a point of getting a, a true natural flow to it. Brian Cook back out to Lucas Johnson. Johnson back to Cook. Working around Wood. Sets up Kropalia. Blocked by Jefferson. Cook. No Cook. basket. Up Cook. On the baseline before the shot. Richard Jefferson. Oh. Now you you laughed at me. You teased me all weekend. Well, you called him Michael Jordan's kind of skill. I, I said physical skill. Well, see, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying he was in the same league as Michael Jordan. That's no, why I we said left. Physical skill. A unique player, Richard Jefferson, who played underneath the basket. He was an interior player his whole time at Moon Valley High School in Phoenix. His parents missionaries. His mom named Meekness. What a great name, Meekness. They're here. They yeah. made the 16-hour drive from Tucson, or, and, or Phoenix, actually. And, and Richard's dad, John, went up to Lute Olson and said, before this game, said, thanks for putting my son on Frank Williams. That's the kind of responsibility I want for my son. Richard reveling in this opportunity. Walton searching the floor, an excellent passer for a big man. And back to him, he's left alone, and he'll fire the three. Yes! 24-14 as Walton has his first points. They're really utilizing that swing pass, knowing that Illinois loves to pressure that ball and close out the way that Arizona is playing with the ball in front of them, keeping the Illini on their heels. It all helps them when your jumpers go down. Now can Walton guard Williams. Williams, that great quickness inside, and a foul. I believe it was on Wessel coming over to support Walton. It is on Wessel. His first. Now well, they're going to say Edgerson was uh, in on the play. How many he fouls? Has his first. Edgerson just one foul. Frank Williams in the game number two, the one at Chicago, that raucous scene up at the United Center. They haven't had a lot to cheer about in Chicago lately. First point for Williams, who had the Illini season high for any player in the winning on Friday night when he scored 30 to match the number on his uniform. But in that game in Chicago, Frank Williams just one for four. He had some beautiful passes, but nine for 10 from the free throw line. Twenty four sixteen and as we go to timeout. All right, Papa, how did you see this one? <laughs> Behind the line, high above the head. <laughs> <laughs> Not very well, and neither did I. It's what you live for. Your dreams coming true. You spend a lifetime to get to this level. It comes down to one game. All you want though in life is a chance. Both teams have it today. Who's gonna deliver? Who wants it the most? Arizona leading by eight with seven minutes remaining in this opening half. Walton, the bounce pass goes through. Arenas out of bounds, Illinois. Terrible pass. Walton caught in the lane. Had to get rid of it too soon because he was going to get called for three seconds and threw it behind Arenas. When you're as hot as Arenas is, get it to him early and often in the shot clock. Williams, Johnson, Archibald, Bradford on the court with Griffin for Illinois. Williams double team back out to Johnson skip pass Williams passing up the three fires the two not there Griffin another offensive rebound for Illinois Bradford for three yes Arizona's giving up wide open shots on one side and then getting pounded on the defensive weak side on the board that won't win this game bounce pass inside Edgerson battling the Illini to Walton the way they double team Oh, well, Walton goes down, and the foul on Lucas Johnson will be his second. One and one for Luke Walton, named after Maurice Lucas, former great star at Marquette, and then with Portland, the teammate of Bill. At the line, like his father, an ordinary free throw shooter. <laughs> And Johnson rebounds. Illinois cutting into that early Arizona lead. You've got to play perfect if you're going to beat Illinois. Williams, it's blocked. And here comes Arenas the other way. And 
And out of control, out of bounds to Illinois. Lost opportunity for the Wildcats. Things starting to slip away for Arizona. Yes, a five-point lead, but the momentum since they've gone to the bench, since Lucas Johnson has come in, since Corey Bradford knocks down a three, Archibald, Kripalia, huge contributions for Bill Self. Bradford, another three-point attempt, and another rebound, but Archibald pushed off to get position. They'll shoot one and one at the other end. That's what Arizona needs, somebody who wants to get tough underneath. First foul on Robert Archibald. And that's Eugene Edgerson, someone who wears all the pads all over his body. Eugene Edgerson was not a happy camper this year. He wears all those. It's a story well told because he wants to pay tribute to what he calls the old style players going all the way back to the 80s. And he's got the knee pads, the long socks, uh, Judd Bushler's shoes. <laughs> if you're wearing Judd Bushler's shoes, you are old school. <laughs> Judd, the, uh, the great star for Arizona on that 88 Final Four team. Featured Steve Kerr and Sean Elliott. First point for Gene Edgerson, and here's our game summary with uh, Arizona by six, shooting much better than the Illini, but Illinois typically out-rebounding their opponents, especially on the offensive end. Seven offensive rebounds. How does Arizona expect to win? You've got to have a plan. You've got to execute that plan. Eugene Edgerson, who was suspended for a weekend trip up to Washington in the, in the middle of the Pac-10 season this year. Coaches didn't like his attitude. It was right during the Bobby Olsen crisis when uh, Lou Dolson's wife Bobby passed away and Jim Rosborough handling the situation and said, Gene, you've got to reflect on things and you've got to get your act back together. Arizona by seven. Harrington, a good three-point shooter, but Arenas on him quickly inside to Griffin. Got away with what some thought was an extra dribble and it's covered by Jason Gardner, who quickly moves it into the offensive end. Arizona continues to get pushed under the basket. Will not get it done. Gardner for three. 29-19, Gardner with his first points of the game. If you're going to be successful, transition opportunity. Foul, Gene Edgerson. He denied Marcus Griffin the shot. And that'll send Griffin to the line. If you're going to be successful against Illinois, you have to have somebody who can handle the ball up high. Somebody who can take the, take the pressure off of this surging, aggressive, pushing forward defense that the Illini employ. They ticketed Michael Wright with a foul, Bill. It was Michael Wright. on him. Griffin shooting less than 60% from the line on the season as Lauren Woods returns for Arizona, as well as Richard Jefferson, two starters. And uh, Bill Self counters with Brian Cook. Marcus Griffin is one of ten children. When Marcus's mom decided to go back to school when Marcus was a teenager, she went back and earned an accounting degree. She's now a very successful CPA in Peoria. She's there doing her homework as an inspiration and role model to young Marcus as he's growing up as a kid. Now again, the change after the made free throw as Grappaglio will come in for Griffin. Illinois shooting in this first half only 5 for 21 with 24 percent. This is where Arizona gets in trouble when Jason Gardner at about 5, 6 or 7 starts walking the ball up the court. When you're that size, you've got to be lightning at all times. Jefferson with Sergio McLean. There's the closeout defense by Sergio. Gardner with Bradford. Arenas draws Harrington. Inside to Lauren Woods. Hasn't done much yet, and he doesn't hear. He throws it away. Illinois goes the other way. Notice how Lauren Woods, when he gets the ball in the double team, he's stepping back. The step back away from the hoop is taking him totally out of any sort of play. You've got to step forward. Frank Williams, fortunately, back in for Illinois, but his numbers not good on the afternoon coming off a career high 30 Friday night to get him to this point. 0 for 3 from the floor and a free throw is only point. 
Where's the three-second call? Harrington misses the three. Kapalia, another offensive board blocked by Jefferson, and a foul. Here that Jefferson got all ball. There was also another hand in there. But Lauren Woods in the biggest game of his life. It was Edgerson who picked up the foul, not Jefferson. L Lauren Woods should be gobbling up defensive backboards. This is a guy over seven feet tall. Propalia. He's averaging just under five points a game. Lauren Woods, he became a leader on this team when Bobby Olson passed away. He was a guy, he's seen a lot of adversity in his life. He stepped forward when Lute Olson had to stand aside there and get his life back together, and he brought this team together. Went up to Washington, had the second triple-double of his career. Now he's playing absolutely the best basketball until today. Where's it been, though? Where's, I mean, the, where's the rebound? Where's the block shots? Where's the leadership? Where's the aggressive attack on the offensive glass? They take it into Woods. They're trying to awaken him, but a bad pass. He threw it right down at the knees of Edgerson, and here comes Illinois. Coach Olsen might want to go to Justin Wessel here. Off McLean, out of bounds to Arizona. 344 before the intermission. Where'd you say Billy Packer was from? Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and then a star at Wake Forest. Oh, we knew, we knew he was a star, but at Wake Forest, but Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. How was his jumper? That was one of his strengths. He was their point guard. Gardner, the point for Arizona. Jefferson moves on Lucas Johnson, pulls back, and the foul. Johnson reaching in, didn't think so. That'll send Richard Jefferson to the line. Johnson with his third. Foul trouble. Not look, really a factor for Illinois. It doesn't matter which one of these guys fouls out because they have so many. Lucas Johnson, uh, as he walks off, they say his knees look like he scrubs them with Brillo pads. He just has a one constant floor burn. He's, he's a hustling guy. Look at those. Not afraid to give up his body to try to keep the ball on the Illinois oh. side. Lucas Johnson has taken over for Brian Cardinal, last year's Purdue player who was nationally vilified as the, the guy who got into it with virtually every opponent. 30-22, Arizona by eight as we approach the three-minute mark. Now they got Gilbert Arenas. Virtually every possession, Arizona's got a different defender. Richard Jefferson is sharp. And the steal and the foul will be against whom? Jefferson for a charge in the scramble after the steal. And he's bewildered at that call, his second foul. The quick hands initially by Richard Jefferson. You see three Wildcats right around him. He tries to come up the court and just runs over Frank Williams. Frank Williams just holds his ground. They're usually more liberal in the backcourt, but that was a clear bump from Jefferson. Now you've got Walton back in, Jefferson to the bench. Oh, it's Arenas now on Frank Williams. Williams at 6-3 with that lightning quick first step. Marcus Griffith had a backdoor opportunity to Sean Harrington who pulled away from it. Williams still hasn't scored from the field and again, the good boxed out position for the Illinois rebounders and Arizona can't get to the ball, barely touch it out of bounds to Illinois. Williams Still having a hard time offensively. Game. Those big 30 points in game three after 11 and 11 last weekend in rounds one and two. Corey Bradford back in the game and immediately drills the tray. And the Illini climb within five. Corey Bradford, who was the preseason Big Ten Player of the Year pick, took a back seat with the coaching change. Arenas unable to hit on the pass from Walton, and here come the Illini. No second chance opportunities for Arizona. Huge difference in this game. Williams scores. It's 30 to 27, Arizona. Illini fans on their feet across the way as Arizona 
Here's the whistle away from the ball. Frank Williams, always dangerous. Just when things break down for Illinois, this guy can come. The lunging defense, you see Lauren Wood just getting pushed out of the way. Bill Self did not like that last call on his feet, red face barking at the officials as Marcus Griffin has his second, and Archibald's going to come in for it. Lauren Woods looking for his first point. The big man, an excellent free throw shooter, best on the Arizona squad at over 82%. He's averaging uh, nearly 13 a game, his first point tonight. Second chance points on the night. Illinois 14, Arizona 0. Who can get a defensive rebound for the Wildcats? I haven't seen him yet. Five point lead, and Woods will go out. And Justin Wessel, six eight and a half from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, back in. He was a young freshman on that championship team of 1997 in Indianapolis when Arizona defeated Kentucky in overtime. Former Iowa Mr. Basketball player himself, Justin Wessel. Gilbert Arenas, another steal. That's three for him, matching the three he had in the first half on Friday night. They haven't been able to exploit Gilbert Arenas down playing the, the low spot on the three man, Sergio McLean. Wessel takes it in, and he's blocked by Kropalia, and he c controls it. Feel the momentum switching to the men in white, and Kropalia hits the three. The Illini within two. And the defense is dug in. The crowd surging toward the court, and Arizona walking, standing. Approaching the one-minute mark of this first half, Arenas into the lane. Oh, is he smooth? A lot of O's in his smooth. Gilbert Arenas. Remember JoJo White from Kansas University? A lot of that in Gilbert Arenas. Welcome back to San Antonio, the Midwest Regional to complete the Final Four. The winner to face the defending national champion Michigan State Spartans in Minneapolis next Saturday. The Illini have rallied against Arizona, pulling within four at 34-30, 57 seconds, and this man, Gilbert Arenas, leading the Wildcats with 18 points. Gilbert Arenas, who is a huge music fan, remember his dad is in the entertainment industry in Los Angeles. He's still only 19 years old. He's beginning to appreciate the academic and cultural side of life at Arizona. Williams falls, loose ball, and they're going to call it a hell ball. Two men the diving for it went out of bounds, and the arrow points to Arizona with 44 seconds. This, in the half. this is what Arizona needed. Eugene Edgerson willing to put his body in harm's way. The other night, Kansas was just muscled off the court, sent home with their heads hanging low. Today with Eugene Edgerson, Gilbert Arenas, so far, the Wildcats have been able to stand tall. They get the ball in the hands of Arenas. This back screen has been very effective for the Wildcats. Walton, double spin move and a great pass to Wessel. And the foul on Archibald. Now, oh, Braveheart, Robert Archibald with the foul. He was disqualified eight times during the regular season. That's his second. Down the lane with the penetration. The double spin move draws the defense. One bump. Archibald comes right back, gets in the air. Here's Justin Wessel has got to just get in the air and finish. Here's the wheeze, they call him. This is on the first attempt. He's a good free throw shooter, 78% on the season. Justin Wessel is a terrific basketball player. When Lauren Woods was suspended by the NCAA for six games at the start of this season, Justin Wessel fit in magnificently. He's a terrific player that can play the high post, the low post, a solid position rebounder. Misses both free throws, but Gene Edgerson tries to keep it alive. McLean picks it off for Illinois. Shot clock off, down to 16. Arizona missing the opportunities. It's got to be perfect if Arizona's going to pull off this upset. Down to nine. Williams takes it in. Rebound to Wessel. With three seconds, chance for Gardner. Stops. It'll count. Oh, oh. 
And he thought he was fouled the end of the first half. Arizona building an 11 point lead. The Illini then rallied back and cut it to two before the final basket scored by the Arizona Wildcats to give them a 34 30 lead at halftime. Arenas, 18 big points for Arizona. Corey Bradford with three threes, nine points, the leading score for the Illini. That doesn't get you to the championship. Illinois with the ball first. Williams, Griffin, McLean, Cook, and Bradford, who led the Illini in the first half with three trays and a total of nine points. Inside it goes to Griffin and out of bounds to Illinois. Leslie Visser. Dick, the two coaches both expressed disappointment. Lute Olsen said they're giving up way too many offensive rebounds, just as Bill Walton said. He said Lauren Woods has to get involved on the boards, as does Michael Wright. Bill Self said his team is just standing around. He wants Frank Williams to get the team involved. Dick? Well, Sergio McLean got involved as he drives in and cuts the Arizona lead to a pair. Frank Williams seems a lot fresher right now. Very difficult for young players. McLean with a steal. And the lead too far for Marcus Griffin. A rare fast break attempt by Illinois. There's Gilbert, Gilbert Arenas walks over by Lute Olsen is rubbing his stomach. I know that there's some food poisoning running through the Arizona Wildcat squad. A couple of the deep reserves unable to participate today. Jason Garden, Gardner with Jefferson, Arenas. Boy, heavy hit taken by Lauren Woods and the drive by Arenas out of bounds to Arizona. If you're Arizona, you've got to get to the hoop early in this half. Gilbert Arenas either got elbowed or some bad food, but certainly the grimace on his face indicates his discomfort. 18 on the shot clock. Gardner to Jefferson, way off on the jumper, but he gets it right back, takes it in, and scores with a foul. Finally, a second chance point for Arizona. They had been denied in the first half, 14 nothing. Now it's 14 to two. Finally, an offensive rebound for Arizona. Now it's nine to two, Illinois. Richard Jefferson hammered by Brian Cook in the basket area, a chance to put one more on for what for Arizona. And it is Brian Cook's third foul for Illinois. Jefferson with a three point play seven in the game Arizona by five Arizona waiting at the half court line against Bradford where's the backcourt pressure Williams and they very nearly turned it over and does Arenas with it at three steals in the first half great transition defense rebound and Michael Wright able to fight off to Illini back into right and a quick whistle and it goes against Cook and that'll be four on him well, the relentless pounding that Illinois comes with in the back virtually every possession basketball is a game of artistic dance and footwork and balance graceful display of athleticism it's not about forearm shivers to the back knees to the groin well, Demir Krafalia comes in. He sparked the Illini off the bench in the first half with seven points. Inside to right, no foul. There's a foul as Woods takes it up and is denied by Krafalia. Going to the His basket. Second. Arizona, Eugene Edgerson standing up off the bench. A lot of seniors in this game. 18 minutes, 27 seconds left in your college basketball career for these guys. Lauren Woods, who had back surgery, a couple of back surgeries back in April. Big man at 7-1 out of St. Louis, Cardinal Ritter High School. And then after he had the back surgery, where he had to put some, some metal in there to get his back to, to come back together, he caught the Valley Fever. And that compounded everything. So when he came back from his suspension, he was completely out of shape. And when he played in game two up at United Center between these two rivals, that was only his second game back, and he was not ready at that point at all. 39-32, Arizona. Williams is due to get hot. He has the ball, and a whistle away from the ball. Now they're going to come with Michael Wright with the same forearm to the back. And for Wright, it is his third foul. He's got the bulk for Arizona at 6'7 and 240. 
foul trouble for Michael Wright could be critically damaging for Arizona. Good closeout defense by the Wildcats. Napalia, and he charges right over. He was almost ready to put the saddle on, and a couple of incidental bumps uh, as Kripalia goes back on defense. Kripalia is incredibly athletic. Michael Wright stands in there, takes the punishment, the pounding. This guy grew up in athletics, in track and field. That They call it athletics in international competition. His grandfather was very instrumental in encouraging him to participate in all the different disciplines. He has his third foul. Into right. Kripalia on him. The 5'10 point guard, Gardner, and a foul underneath, away from the ball. Offensive foul, Arizona. And Jefferson is the Wildcat appealing. And it's on him, his third. Tim Higgins is going to take no grief from anyone in this game. Tim Higgins, the lead official, has refereed so many of college basketball's biggest games. Bradford. Archibald in now for Cook. McLean part of the Peoria three outside to Williams. Way off the mark, but another offensive rebound. Griffin rejected underneath. Bradford takes it in, and he has 11. He gets hammered, not to the line. Again, the Wildcats' inability to control the defensive backboard. Illinois has never led. Arizona's biggest lead, middle of the first half, 11. Gilbert Arenas busted the three on the opening play for Arizona. Archibald reaching over and knocks it out of bounds to Arizona. You've got to keep Arizona off your shoulder when they're coming over the top. But Illinois, guys like Archibald and Griffith, McLean, Cook, Napoleon, they're all just coming each and every time. You've got to keep those shoulders broad and the elbows high. Gardner, strong to the hoop. The littlest man on the court, Jason Gardner, has five. Archibald into Woods, and the foul's going to be on Arizona. Lauren Woods cannot let that happen, but fortunately for Lute Olsen, Jason Gardner coming alive with a slash down the middle. The forearms to the head, bodies just flying out there. Gardner Jason, wondering why no foul. I got hit right in the head, as you clearly can see. What is a foul out here? Archibald at the line. Solid contributor, this junior. Came to the U.S. as a senior in high school with his parents. From Dunfermline, Scotland. Unable to practice as much as everyone else does. And Bill Self, a firm believer that the amount of conditioning that you need in practice prepares you for this style of play. That bulging disc, though, limits that, limits that practice time. It's certainly not his effectiveness at the foul line tonight. Seven for eight for Archibald from the line. Again, Corey Bradford's ability defensively to get Jason Gardner to walk the ball up the court. Good sign there for the Illini. Jefferson will pop from three. Archibald clears for Illinois. Here come the Illini down by only five with 16 minutes and change remaining in the turnover. A careless error from Frank Williams. Frank Williams will give some defensive credit to the strategy to put Richard Williams in. Richard Jefferson, excuse me, on him. But when you're a young player, one of the hardest things to do is come back from a great performance. Because you go back to the hotel, everything seems perfect. Oh, I can do this at any time. It's that level of self-motivation working. Jefferson, another offensive foul, and that's four on Richard Jefferson, a key ingredient in this Arizona attack. He'll have to come out as Lute Olson looks down the bench and calls upon Luke Walton. Terrific defensive footwork by Sergio McLean, the glue that keeps this team together. The son of a coach, a senior himself, looking at now 16 minutes even in his college career. They don't get this one done for Illinois. 
McLean at 6-4, powerful, off to Archibald, and he hits the eight-footer, 41-38. Arizona's lead down to three. Nine points for Archibald off the bench. And Lute Olsen says, where is the consistency in the offensive foul called? There goes another player to the deck, and a foul called in the lane. And it's against Arizona. Oh, my. Arenas with his second. Luke Walton guarding him. Richard Jefferson on the bench with four fouls. Arizona losing their poise. And no foul, traveling. no foul. Traveling. And traveling is the call. Marcus Griffin hopping in. Couple of bumps. Uh, the bruising, intimidating style here. The Illinois is really taking its toll. The offensive fouls away from the ball. One by Richard Jefferson. One by Gilbert Arenas. What has happened to Gilbert Arenas offensively? First 11 minutes, he had 16, only two points since. Well, they've got great defense at Illinois. And Sergio McLean doing it all. Walton barely maintaining possession. Where's the offense going to come from? Michael right. right. Nice move inside. And the foul will be on Griffin as he denies Lauren Woods. Third foul on Marcus Griffin. Gilbert Arenas, who was rubbing his stomach early, has uh, gone, gone ice cold here. He hadn't even getting good looks. He carried the team early. We talked at halftime about the need for team balance. Who's going to come alive? Is it going to be Richard Jefferson? He's got four fouls. Where's Michael Wright? Where's Lauren Woods? Planking free. You cannot win championships by being conservative. Arizona, if they're going to hold on to this lead, it cannot be just by holding on. They're going to have to be able to go out and attack, get the tempo going back their favor. But it's a half-court bruising game right now, which clearly favors the Illini. Williams with a solid move, and Woods with a block, and it was last touched by Williams of Illinois. Well, Lauren Woods showing some defensive prowess of his own. He had 70 blocks during the regular season. And a terrific job of keeping the ball in play. The guards, uh, Jason Gardner, reading the block perfectly. Arizona's got to come back through Michael Wright. Uh, Turnover, Walton. Bobble by Arenas, and... Loose ball with the Illini two on two. Williams can't hit. His problems continue. Look at Trapaglia fight and finally a held ball. The arrow points to Arizona. The incredible physical nature of college basketball. Everyone trying to beat Michigan State. Terrific defense by Lauren Woods. Appeared to be Michael Wright over the back. Trapaglia had the great position. He can't believe it's a jump ball possession Arizona. I think he said, holy cow, there, I really do. <laughs> One for nine now for Frank Williams. How many languages does Kripal you speak? Oh, I'm sure, but like <laughs> most Europeans, three or four. Lauren Woods, not the most creative passer from the high post. They're doing a phenomenal job of denying Michael Wright. Look at McLean on Walton. Walton in heavy traffic and a reach in. Will go against hit McLean, hit him on the head as he reached by to try to make the steal. Sergio is such a fierce competitor, himself the coach of a son. This guy is, is such an outstanding individual. Yeah, his dad, Wayne uh, McLean, four straight Illinois state championships at Peoria Manual. Walton, another spin move, comes up short. McLean with a rebound. Trailing by four, the Illini on the attack. Where's the backboard on the short jumper from the side? Harrington, another block by Lauren Woods. Three for him. A low offensively. The defense for both teams. Lauren Woods coming alive. Oh, look how high he was. Well, Harrington is a terrific player here. Just a sophomore for Bill Self. The Illini fans have a lot to be happy about the future with this young man. Gets to work against Frank Williams in practice every day. And that's going to be a blocking call on Walton of Arizona. Guys His are, second. Guys are not playing defense with their feet. They're trying to just fool the referee every single time. Beat off the dribble early. A lack of preparation with good footwork costing Walton that time. Both teams now with six fouls will be in the bonus from now on. Harrington fires from three. Lauren Woods finally. But he tips it over Walton said out of bounds to Illinois. 
But Michael Wright not having the strongest of games. Lou also might want to try Gene Edgerson. Give him a chance. You'd be a good assistant coach. <laughs> <laughs> McLean near the center line with Walton on him. I'm trying to get rid of me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying you've got all kinds of suggestions for Luth. <laughs> Lauren Woods again. Look at Archibald fighting the block. I believe Walton fouled in the process. But when Lauren Woods is in the defensive zone that he's in, the rest of the Wildcats have to realize what their responsibilities are. When Moore is going in the air for blocks, you've got to get to the weak side. You've got to put a body on somebody. You have to rotate defensively. Keep Archibald off. Three fouls now on Luke Walton as Archibald at the line, trying to cut into that four-point advantage. Solid free throw shooter. He's eight for nine. Here comes, must have heard you, Lute. Here comes Gene Edgerson. Now he's going with, his, with second, his second front line, Lute Olson, of Wessel, Walton, and Eugene Edgerson. The two seniors, Wessel and Edgerson. Pressure mounting, 13 18. They give away some height, though, with Wright and Woods to the bench. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. That's why Eugene Edgerson is a giant in this game. Illinois within two. They've been within a basket several times, never had the lead. And the cold spell for Arizona. Got to move. You got to move. Gardner, long range three. Not there. Walton with a rebound. Arenas. The slashing quick hand. Three guys. And Propalia with a hand check. His fourth foul. They just keep coming. They just keep mauling. They don't care if they hit you. Foul trouble means nothing. Renus gets up uh, shaking himself a bit and a change. Lucas Johnson comes in get, for Cropalio. Gilbert Arenas bent over at the half court line here. The exhaustion, the not sleeping, the pressure, the ability to calm the mind in the biggest of moments. Use the crowd to make your body feel golden. Well, Arenas came out fiery with uh, 16 points in the first nine minutes. Only a, a basket since, and obviously not feeling 100% as he comes to the line, a 72% free throw shooter. It's one and one. Gilbert Arenas and Jason Gardner, best of friends. Comedic personalities off the court, the life of the party. Roommates on the road, inseparable at all times. Yeah, the party, though, the big party is a week from yesterday in Minneapolis, and these two teams uh, hoping that the printers up there in Minneapolis will have their name as part of the Final Four. The party is Monday. The party is Monday. Yeah, but the party starts on Saturday, doesn't it? One team. Well, you're UCLA. One you always expected to win. To one team. You didn't none, even enjoy going none, to the final none four? None of this just getting to the final four. It's winning the final four. Arenas hits both free throws, 44-40. Arenas now with 20. 13-4 edge offensive rebounds for Illinois. Who's going to get a rebound? Lauren Woods on the bench. Gene Edgers and Wessel Walton up front. Oh, guys pass to Archibald, set up by McLean. 44-42, Arizona. you got to deny penetration. Arizona's playing two guys on the ball every time on the penetration. How about Robert Archibald off the bench to lead his team in scoring with 13. Nice post entry pass. Edgerson has to pull it out. Yeah, Archibald has seven, six inches on him. Walton in traffic can't hit and a foul as Wessel comes in banging. And they'll go to the other end. Illinois shooting one and one. Interior passing by Illinois has been terrific. Sergio McLean just having a fabulous floor game. Robert Archibald coming from the weak side. The momentum building toward the basket. Arizona unable to rotate after they put two guys on the attacking penetration of Sergio McLean. Robert Archibald, uh, part of the statistic that shows Illinois' bench outscoring Arizona 20 to 5. They outscored Kansas 28-0 on Friday night. The strength of Bill Self's team. A chance to tie for Archibald, the leading score for Illinois. Big men who can shoot free throws. Good Scott. 44-44, and Illinois celebrates. And here he controls the tempo once again. Bill Self with the substitution. 
taking advantage of the rules, getting into a half court game. Harrington on Arenas, and then the jump out by Griffin. This defense of Illinois has really tightened here in the second half. Gardner, 15 on the clock. 12 minutes to go. A tie game at 44. First time in the game it's been even. Gardner, whoa, off the board. Edgerson. How's that not a foul? Jason Gardner, former Indiana Mr. B Mr. Basketball, down the lane. Lute Olsen is just laughing at the turn of events here. Arizona back in front by a basket. Bradford over Walton and Wessel. Tied again at 46, 11.29 to go. Everything at the basket for both teams. Somebody's got to be able to spread the floor. Somebody's got to have some sort of perimeter game. Walton around McLean, blocked by Griffin. Wessel there with a left hand to counter. 48, 46, his first basket. Marcus Griffin, terrific presence inside defensively. Lucas Johnson for three, and Illinois leads for the first time. McLean rebound Walton and with a two-point lead the Wildcats on the run Jason Gardner, Gardner hip checked by Bradford you've got to keep the ball going forward you can't turn your back Jason Gardner who was a key offensive performer early in the season big change in the offense for Arizona as the season has unfolded as it shifted more to Gilbert Arenas and Michael Wright but now Jason Gardner with the Season on the line, 10 and a half minutes to go to the final four. Archibald and Williams return to the lineup for Illinois with Bradford and McLean arrested and to the line. Jason Gardner, all Pac 10 first team last year, as he and Arena starting as freshmen for Arizona in the backcourt, and of course, a solid one two punch all of this season for the Cats. Three things have influenced Arizona's season here. The play of Jason Gardner, the shifting role there. You got Lauren Woods coming back. The Bobby Olsen incident that caused such great instability. Now it's all on the line with under 10, or 10 minutes, 17 to go. Gardner missing the front end of the one and one. Harrington. Another offensive rebound. No, last touch by Marcus Griffin of Illinois. Timeout at the midpoint of the second half. Along with Ole Miss and Kansas, Arizona, Illinois, a great party here in San Antonio with the game here at the midpoint of the second 20-minute period. It's a two-point game, Arizona leading. Offensive rebounds, plus eight for Illinois, and bench points big, big again for the Illini. Championship moments, what players live for. Michael Wright averages 16 points a game. He's got two points today. Lauren Woods averages 13 points a game. He's got five. Lauren does have four blocks, though. Michael Wright has not taken a shot this evening's game. And Gilbert Arenas has become very quiet after that lightning start. Lamont Frazier on the floor now, and Lauren Woods has returned for Arizona. Pass into right. There's a shot attempt, and it's blocked, but a foul by Archibald. He knew it. And he has three. Terrific position by Michael Wright. This battle away from the ball between Wright and Marcus Griffith that time. But Bill Self has done a marvelous job this evening of denying Michael Wright good looks down low. The contact, the elbow across the face. Wright, who made the third team All America team, two time All Pac 10. Takes a lot of time at that line at UCLA this year with a game on the line in the closing moments. They whistled Michael Wright for a, a violation in shooting the free throw in not the allowed time. The Ludo's, 10 seconds actually Ludo, called that. They called it in the closing moments of an overtime game. Arizona lost the game. Lute Olsen oh. said he had never seen it called. Lute Olsen in his 40 years, 40 years of coaching. 
He's made four points tonight all at the free throw line Mike Wright and it's a four point Arizona advantage. Frank Williams now he's got Lamont Frazier an exquisite defender on him but not with size. And Archibald the Illini's top score maneuvers around Lauren Woods and scores what a game game of his life for Archibald he's reached a season and career high of 17 must have been the Scottish pudding. This is a great place to come you know San Antonio <laughs> for that dish. <laughs> it's arenas. A changing defenses now Lucas Johnson making an impact out there John horrendous post entry pass and here comes Harrington a chance for a tie or the lead with a three and Lucas Johnson for three Illinois back in front 54 53. Frazier left hander not there he bats the ball and off his own teammate Woods out of bounds to Illinois Lamont Frazier trying to make it happen a critically important element of this wildcat attack Lute Olson supportive on the bench the he, offense though has gone ice cold for Arizona as Illinois defense so stifling Gilbert Arenas back in Frazier takes a seat one point lead Lucas Johnson Announcing his presence with that take the lead tray. And Archibald, the game of his life. Underneath to Griffin, blocked and taken by Arenas. Something in transition for Arizona. What a move. Around Williams. Goaltending. Off the board. No, and Tim Higgins is going to say he pushed it into the board, which is legal. And the foul. It'll go against Frank Williams, his first. But does the ball hit the glass first? Looked like it. 54 53 number one seed Illinois number two seed Arizona eight minutes left here in the regional final in San Antonio's Alamo Dome the winner will meet Michigan State next Saturday in the NCAA semifinals arenas red hot off the start 16 points early trying to tie it up free throws down the stretch check your conditioning level when do you shoot them in practice what's your mental preparation how often do you train yourself for this situation in your life? Sergio McLean back in and Griffin gets a blow to tie again for Arenas looking for his 21st point. So we start anew with eight minutes left. Offensive fluidity for Arizona the relentless push for Illinois. Who can get a rebound for Arizona? Who can deny? They're having to double team Robert Archibald. And that leaves Bradford open for the three. Archibald over the back, but it goes out of bounds to Illinois. And the hustle of the big man, 6'11, Robert Archibald from Scotland for Illinois. Influences in Bill Self's life and career. You mentioned Larry Brown, but also Leonard Hamilton and Eddie Sutton. Hamilton played at. Uh, their wedding played the piano outside McLean Archibald continues his brilliant game Sir McLean with a spin get runs on the into ground. trouble and it'll be a held ball going to Illinois alternating possessions ball will go to Illinois but Bill Self has changed things around what Lon Kruger was running last year Lon, Lon Kruger had everything going through Corey Bradford Self comes in he distributes everything around his attitude is pounded inside. We got the size, we got the strength, and let's give it to Frankie Williams when things are not going well. Now William. they're on the verge of the Final Four. First time since 89 for Illinois. Wonder if he'll invite Garth Brooks to the finals if he gets there. They were uh, at Oklahoma State together. Brooks, a javelin thrower, and they were members of the same fast pitch baseball softball team in the summers down there in Stillwater. Whatever happened to Garth Brooks? I remember his I remember his javelin career. They didn't make the Olympics. I remember that. Williams, Bradford, tie game, 7:23 to go into Archibald. He takes it in. Robert Archibald with 19 a career high perfect post entry pass Walton at the other end and Archibald almost breaks him in two. Wow was that a rough foul his fourth 
What is a flagrant foul in college basketball? Well, that's not even an intentional foul, much less flagrant. Beautiful footwork by Robert Archibald. Then in a beautiful transition play. Hard to see where that's an attempt on the ball. We saw this at the end of the game against Kansas with Lucas Johnson and Archibald involved in the same play. Well, Luke Walton trying to tie it up with these two free throws. Leslie. Dick, uh, just a couple of notes on the new star, Robert Archibald. He grew up 15 minutes from St. Andrews. He lives in quite an international apartment. He lives with Lucas and Demir, and he secretly has some kilts at home. <laughs> Dick. Yeah, the, the teammates knew all about it as Walton knocks down the two free throws and we're even again at 56 with seven minutes and change left in San Antonio. Michigan State awaits the winner in the final four. Lauren Woods and Michael Wright do not have a field goal attempt. They have tried some. They've been sent to the foul line. Beautiful entry pass again to Griffin and then uh, the collapsing defense and a foul. This guy Sergio McLean, the coach's son, the guy that had all the the Peoria manual guys together this guy can play ball Jason Gardner picks up his second foul his creativity his leadership he may not be the guy that gets all the statistics he doesn't get the ink but this guy has led this team here his spin drives to the hoop Sergio McLean a whole group there in Peoria from southern this is from the Southern Valley. They'd all come over to the McLean house and play Nintendo in the basement. Guys like Frank Williams, Marcus Griffin, but Sergio, that's the leader out there, and he's delivering this afternoon. Griffin misses wow. the front end of one and one, and Lucas Johnson over the back, out of bounds, or is it a foul? Johnson was reaching over. Guess he'd last touched it. It goes to Arizona. There they are, the pride of Peoria. Last year was Michigan State and the three a tremendous players from Flint, Michigan that led them to the national title. They're hoping the route to the national title goes through Peoria, Illinois, the fans of the Illini. Zone defense here. Lucas Johnson out in front with the long, rangy arms, the bouncing. Arizona has cooled off the second half, shooting 36% after a 56%. Shot making in the first half. Who's going to come with the offense? Richard Jefferson has been on the bench for an eternity with four fouls. Now under 10 in the shot clock. At seven, Arenas for three. Horrendous use of the shot clock there. And Gardner backs it out. Walton inside to Lauren Woods. It trickles home for the big man. His first field goal. Seven points for Woods. Jason Gardner did a brilliant thing. Pull it back out. Make them play defense again. <laughs> Not that Illinois is going to get tired. This is as physically conditioned a team as I've seen since the John Wooden days. And an offensive foul on Illinois. Eugene Edgerson willing to stand in and take the punishment. Marcus Griffin has four fouls. Eugene Edgerson standing there. The push in the back by Marcus Griffith. For some of the things that have gone on to call that, you, <laughs> can't, you, you, can't, believe, you, you can't figure that. It's a double bonus now in effect for Arizona and the next Wildcat foul will be their 10th and the double bonus for the Illini as well. What could be better to have your own career in your hands at the line Eugene Edgerson. They're calling a timeout here. It's six minutes two seconds left in regulation. University of Arizona fans, many of them driving from Tucson to cheer on the Wildcats, who were picked by many of the experts at the start of the season. Number one on the team to beat for the national title. They won it four years ago in Indianapolis in overtime against Kentucky. The Cats looking for their fourth trip to the Final Four under the leadership of that man, Lou Olson, 65 years young in his 18th year at Arizona. Three holdovers on this Wildcat roster, Gene Edgerson, Justin Wessel, the other senior leader, and then John Ash, a seldom used reserve. They all spoke last night at the team meeting about how special it was, but it was Gene Edgerson's emotional plea for greatness in the face of adversity. Well, the action stronger than words at this stage, and he provides that, making the first free throw, and Richard Jefferson returns to the lineup with four fouls after that long sit on the bench. A lot of guys have four fouls. Cook's got it for Illinois. kripalia has got four. Griffin, Archibald. Yeah, but they have six men that can go. Uh, 
down the line in fouls, and that's been the great uh, strength of this Illinois team as Edgerson hits the front of the rim, and Hender, well, that's the way to come back in. Richard Jefferson picks off the rebound, and another possession for Arizona with a three-point lead. The zone defense trying to protect some of their big guys. Nice collapse by Lucas Johnson. That's not a violation deflected into the backcourt by Illinois. 18 on the clock. Get on the run if you're Jason Gardner. That's where you're at your best. Oh, a long, long three! Jason Gardner. And Arizona leads by six. They're dancing in Sabino Canyon. The Catalina Mountains growing. Mount Lemon swelling with pride. Back come the Illini. Bradford stolen by Gardner. And he's fouled as Griffin denied an easy two at the other end. And that'll be all for Marcus Griffin. Marcus Griffith, one of the one of the seniors. They only lose two off this team. The great Sergio McLean and Marcus Griffith, two of the Peoria trio. It was Brian Cook who was fouled out with four points. Let's go back to that long, long three by Gardner. Jason Gardner with plenty of time on the shot clock. You got Lucas Johnson, who's very effective up at that point. 13 on the shot clock. Ice. Frank Williams was talking about the ice in his veins. Jason Gardner out of Indianapolis, a former Mr. Basketball. And then he comes back with a steal at the other end and draws the foul that has eliminated Cook into the line. Gardner looking for his 12th point. Jason Gardner was found by a patient of Dr. Ed Stokes. Ed Stokes, the father of former Arizona Wildcat big man star Ed Stokes. Dr. Ed Stokes in Los Angeles He's talking to one of his patients and the patient says hey there's this really good player in Indianapolis that you're going to want to check out. That was the first contact. Dr. Ed Stokes called Lou Dolson and said you might want to look into this guy. Eight point lead Arizona. And five points in the last 15 seconds from Jason Gardner. Now the pressure on Illinois. Size and strength. Richard Jefferson out in front on Frank Williams. He's got four fouls. Good step out, Lauren Woods. Williams still one for eight from the floor in the game. They've really done a good job shackling him, but not him. Archibald scores again, and he's fouled. Lauren Woods. What is he thinking? That's his second, Lauren Woods. You, you make a soft foul. Terrific defense by Gene Edgerson, but a little soft foul in a game like this to allow a guy who's having a phenomenal, a career game. Robert, don't call me Bobby Archibald. 16 was his career high prior to this regional final as he looks for his 22nd point. And what footwork Archibald has in the low post, the ambidextrous delivery of the jump hook, the drop steps, the pivots inside and out, flawless upper body torso rotation. This is a player, Robert Archibald. Under five minutes to go. Arenas makes his move into the lane. Jefferson from the wing. Not and he was close. fouled, pushed down low by Lucas Johnson. Yeah, remember, is it a two or a three shot foul? It is a three. And for Lucas Johnson, his fourth personal. Richard Jefferson has to stand up and make these free throws. The intimidating presence that Lucas Johnson brings to every basketball game, trying to get into the, the mindset of the opponents. Leslie Visser talked about it in the open. Eight points for Jefferson. He hits the first of three. On the right-hand side of your screen, feet clearly behind the line. That's a foul. Don't see that at all. Referees just suckered into it by Richard Jefferson. Well, this is a night to award great uh, acting, and the Oscar for the moment goes to Jefferson, who is making it pay off for Arizona, and now a chance. But the two movies that have come to mind, Gladiator and Traffic, we already spoke about Maximus and his job of bringing the team together. Traffic, how the biggest battles in your life are won with your mind, and that's going to be the story in the last five minutes here. Arizona by eight. Four and a half to go. Archibald again. They can't stop Robert Archibald. 24 for him. The worst part for Arizona, nobody can deny guard penetration. Arizona so very fortunate to be up by six here. 
They have not de defended their defensive backboard. They have not denied guard penetration, and they're still up. Tenuous, tenuous touch. Oh, bad pass. It's over the top, and Lauren Woods touches it last. And here come the Illini and Lou Olson. Those are the kind of plays that do make a man's hair gray. <laughs> 18th turnover and watch out for Archibald down low 24 points six for seven from the floor 12 for 13 from the line Sergio McLean guess who gets it and he's fouled by Edgerson now that was the kind of foul you were talking about that Woods should have delivered the last time at least you deny the shot you think this isn't a physical game here on Bodies everywhere. Eugene Edgerson willing to come in, put his body in harm's way, but the exquisite free throw demonstration that we've seen from this fine young Scott today. Missed only one of 13. You know, Bill, you never know when your number is going to come up. Here's a reserve. He knew he'd play some, mostly defense, get some rebounds. But you go to bed at night, every night an athlete, thinking maybe tomorrow's when I'll be the big man. But that's why you have to prepare for every single game. You never know how it's going to turn out. If you're a key player, finally a miss. And the rebound by Jefferson. And Arizona brings it down court, leading by five with 348 left. An eternity. Arenas with Williams hawking him defensively. Come to the ball if you're Arizona. This is where Illinois is at their best. The hawking, the closeouts. Can Jason Gardner create? Gardner with Bradford down the lane. Very tough chance. Look at Eugene How Edgerson. How did he get it back? Eugene Edgerson made it all happen. Coming as a senior. Quite possibly his last game. Bodies in the air. And now they'll... Take it out and the whistle away from the ball, or at no, least a time has been no, called. The, the argument is about whether they should reset, reset the shot clock. They did reset it. The question is whether it should have been reset. Of course, it They're uh, initiated go and look by it Gardner's right drive uh, inside. Did it uh, hit the iron? And so this delay at the 317 mark certainly uh, carving a slice into the building drama here. Regardless, it's going to be Arizona's ball. But inside, does it hit? No. No, it does no not. the second time it did on the push by Jeff by Edgerson. It looked like it did hit the rim. Currently 23 it, seconds showing on the shot clock. It clearly did not hit on, on Jason Gardner's shot. The question is, did it hit on the stick back attempt by Gene Edgerson? Down the lane. Up and over, and Edgerson from the weak side. I don't think it did. It didn't Can't appear see it from to there, hit the it? rim. Did not appear, but pushed in against the backboard. And now the determination how much time on the shot clock you'll be able. No, you can't quite see it there. I think it might have hit, Dick. If it did, it was just a graze at best. Now they got Tim Higgins, the master. Now, see, here's a case where in trying to get it right, you almost wonder if this whole process is wrong. You know, the rhythm of the game has been disrupted now. It's if Arizona would have the ball. It was, would not have been that significant a play either way. Neither, neither side, neither side was really arguing about it, so it's another 8, 10 seconds. How can you say that? This well, is the final the, four on the line. Well, this is the I, most important play of the entire season so why, for why these don't we, Why don't we wait an hour and really get it right and then let them all cool off? We can come out and warm up again. Sounds I mean. like a great idea to me. <laughs> Perfection, that's all we want. Down the lane. It's an imperfect world, Redhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I still had red hair. Oh, I think that ball hits the rim. Leslie Visser. Dick, they don't think right now they can make a definitive decision on what happened. The referees are saying, watch the ball. Watch the front of the ball. Don't watch the players. Watch the ball. Dick. Well, here's the shot. This obviously, do you agree with me, Bill? This doesn't hit the iron. The first one doesn't. I and think the second one there. does. I think the second one does. But was it off Edgerson off or was it off the defender? It, it doesn't of matter. Illinois. All it has to do is hit the rim. It doesn't matter who, who hits it there. They're saying it hit, and there'll be a timeout in San Antonio. It's the rim. It'll be Arizona ball now, 20 on the shot clock. Gardner inside to Woods. 
67-62 Arizona. Arenas pulls up off the mark. Rebound Woods, an offensive rebound. He scores with one. The Arizona bench erupts. Lauren Woods. The quick jumper by Gilbert Arenas off the mark. And finally, an offensive aggressive play by Lauren Woods. And now with a chance at the free throw line. A terrifically skilled free throw shooter, but how is it under pressure? Ten nice. points now for Woods and an eight point lead. Arizona now pressure on the Illini. Three minutes to go. Frank Williams has been getting down the lane and dishing. Arizona has to realize that, try to stay at home more. Oh, he looted everyone. Then he misses the dunk. Gets it back for three. Oh, what Lauren a Woods. awful night for. Frank Williams, the Big Ten Player of the Year, the star of this Illinois attack offensively. He had a career-high 30 on Friday night and just dismal four-point performance on one for ten shooting here in this regional final. One for ten. The number jumps out. Frank Williams, one of ten children. McLean with that last foul, and he has four for Illinois. Frank Williams' sister, Marlena. Yesterday, she's a star for the University of Missouri. They lost in the women's NCAA tournament to Louisiana Tech. CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Free throws, Arizona with the 11 more than Illinois. And the foul count against the Illini didn't hurt them against the cold free throw shooting Kansas team, but Arizona certainly taking full advantage, and it's a 10-point lead for the Cats. An eternity still. Arizona cannot get conservative because you know Illinois is going to play as the caged animal. Bradford can't hit the three. Woods embraces the rebound. Lauren Woods has come alive here. And now Illinois is almost in a position where with this clock working against them, they can have to consider fouls. Who's going to make free throws? Now, Illinois very willing to make, make those fouls. Get the ball in Gilbert Arenas' hands. Into Walton, and he's jammed as... Sergio McLean hits him with a body, and that could be five on him. Now you got to stand in if you're Arizona and say points, points, points. Pile them on. Don't let them catch up. Sergio McLean leaves with his fifth foul and scoring two points. Boy, that's uh, misleading, the contribution well, he makes defensively uh, on the boards and uh, as a leader. This guy is an incredible basketball player. Not the polished guy with the go-to game, Sergio McLean. But you cannot say enough about what he does for the whole team. And now as a senior, Sergio McLean will have to root the next 216 for his teammates if he hopes to extend his collegiate now, career. Now, you talk about slowing the game down. You were against that earlier. What about this? The guy fouls out, and they take an eternity to come and get the guys going. What, what, what do you think about that? Well, I don't like it, but I think all the coaches do. I think they all. I don't see Lute Olson complaining, and I think coaches basically like the idea of having this free time out, if you well, will. Yeah, we're not going to let you, we're not gonna let you, you know, wish you watch you here you earlier called for the speed up of the game you just gobbled <laughs> up all of that introductory period he's had enough said about him Walton. he now has six points off the bench the sixth man averaging about that on the season and the mountain is growing against Illinois three-point shot changes everything Missed free throws. Batted out. Can Wood save? No. Now oh, the Illini with the ball with two minutes and 14 seconds showing. Who can play defense on Frank Williams? Who can deny Robert Archibald? Richard Jefferson has the initial responsibility out front. Williams walks in and is blocked from behind by Jefferson and out of bounds to Illinois. Lauren Woods. This guy who, who came from a disastrous first 30 minutes of this game to just become a tower of strength and efficiency underneath. From the corner, Bradford oh. gets a lucky bounce, and it's worth three big points for Illinois. There's no luck at this point. This is about making things happen. That's Corey Bradford. Timeout, Arizona. Jason Gardner calling time as he felt the pressure in the backcourt. Less than two minutes to go.
We're going to have a parade of fouls now. I think we're going to be lucky to make our flight tonight. You know that? Here's a look at our game reset. Arizona with a ball leading by eight. Less than two to go. Team fouls both in the double bonus. Each coach has at least two timeouts with which to work the arrow favors Illinois. Bill Self got a lot of work here to do. They're going to foul every time. Arizona has to come to the ball, break the offense here. They're going to slash. Oh, there's oh. one turnover as Woods throws right. it right to Johnson, and Harrington hits the three. 73 68. So that turnover immediately costs Lute Olson's Wildcats. Timeout again. A pair of trays from Bradford and Harrington cut an 11 point lead very quickly down to five with 148 to go. A horrendous inbound pass by Lauren Woods. You've got to get on the move. You've got to come to the ball if you're Arizona. Remember, game one between these two teams in Lahaina at Thanksgiving. Arizona up 15 late and a barrage of threes by Frank Williams and Sean Harrington. They foul Luke Walton. Who can make free throws for the Wildcats? Is it on Archibald or on Bradford? If it's Archibald, it'll be five, and it's not. It is. And that is costly to Illinois. What a game for Robert Archibald as his Illini fans give him a hand. Oh, off the bench, a man who gives you some good minutes. Tonight he gave them a great game. 25 points, 6 for 7 from the field, and 13 out of 15 from the line. And now one of these pauses that refresh as each coach with the Are you foul out. The well, it gives you a chance to catch your breath, you know, and again, and appreciate the, the moment. So Archibald is out, and in comes Damir Kropalia. I, I learned from a coach that stoppage of play just allowed the other team to regroup. That's right, Coach Wooden wouldn't Never call timeout. Call timeout would he? he just would not call them, especially time, the first time. Timeouts were an admission of defeat. Walton. Under pressure makes it 74 68 one out of two is not going to get it done for Arizona you're talking about piling up points on the board because Illinois is great at desperation it's two straight times now Walton one for two six point lead two three pointers away and Bradford guns and hits 74 71 and Illinois saving its three point play best for the last. Corey Bradford, who's been ice cold from outside, certainly heating up tonight. He's five for ten from three-point range, and he's pulled Illinois within three with plenty of time left. And there's the situation. The one change, the arrow favors Arizona. Corey Bradford, who was supposed to be the star of this team, preseason pick for Big Ten Player of the Year, best friends with Frank Williams, the job that they have done. Got to move the ball. They're waiting for a foul. Can Lauren Woods deliver? Yes. So Illinois not needing to foul now with the pressure in the backcourt forgot about the big center Lauren Woods always look deep Williams the one Jason man that can Gardner. hit the big shot and Gardner the littlest man on the court able to somehow dart in there and come up with a ball it has been the Jason Gardner show Jason Gardner showing That's once cool. again is not how high you jump it's where you are and when you jump. Not a game of size and strength, but a game of skill, timing, and positioning. Propalia becomes the third Illini to foul out. He leaves with uh, his point seven all scored in the first half. Here's another one of those stoppage of plays that you think is such a good idea. I didn't say it's a good <laughs> idea, but apparently the uh, that isn't going to change anything tonight as Lute Olson has his team on the court and Gardner ready to shoot and he's pointing down at Bill Self saying hey how long are you going to let him uh, decide who's going to replace Kripalia and actually you know I guess there is a clock that the official score puts on this situation and he blo now blows them back into uh, play as uh, Sean Harrington comes in he's one of the top three point shooters but Bill Self has shown himself to be a master at Utilizing every rule in the book to control tempo. 
the substitutions after made free throws after guys foul out he doesn't care if his guys foul out. he's got so many got so many of them over there Gardner has 14 points and Arizona now leads by six foul trouble Jefferson's been played with four he's the only guy for Arizona four guys out for Illinois Johnson still with four of his own Gardner hits them both 78 71 Arizona Desperation time now for Illinois. Lucas Johnson terrific in these scenarios. Only Marcus Griffin on the floor for Illinois is not a three-point shooter. That one would not have counted. The foul was before the shot. Uh, Lucas Johnson set a terrific screen away from the ball as they were trying to free up three-point shooters, Corey Bradford or Harrington. And Arenas, with the foul running through that pick, has his third. Lucas Johnson at the line for Illinois. Arenas continues to... Show the effects of uh, something bothering him desperately. Not much left in his tank. Well, there better, if Arizona's going to win, there better be something. We've got this game. The way Self works this clock and just utilizes every single second. Lucas Johnson. Two shots. Nate Mass, the seldom used reserve, walk on is at the scores table as Johnson hits both free throws. And here comes Mass, the 5'11 senior, just to give so how, so Bill Self another man who can give a foul. But why can't that substitution be made? It wasn't for the shooter. Why, why can't that be made before the free throws get set? This just gives Illinois a chance to set their defense. Jefferson with the clock ticking toward the one minute mark and Lucas Johnson with the body gets the foul and that'll be all for him. He leaves with so, eight points. So now we've got a, what, another 30 seconds. Do you have your stopwatch with you? I don't. I never could afford one that had that. You know, I get those okay. two hands, a and Central that's Central Michigan grad. That's all. We were lucky. We get that one graduation <laughs> gift, and there's no uh, no second hand on it. All right. What do you imagine? Lute Olson is saying to his Arizona Wildcats here, Bill. Aggressiveness. He said, guys, it's been an unbelievable season for us of turmoil. We've had NCAA suspensions to Lauren Woods and Richard Jefferson. We've had the death in the family of one of the greatest Wildcats of all time, Bobby Olson. Now we got a chance to get to the final four. There's a minute, three seconds left. He Can said you all, finish he, it? He said all of no, that. No. His lips didn't even move. Hardly. That's not true at all. All he has to do is look. All he has to do is breathe that confidence into his team. And he's got his main man, Jason Gardner. And he does have the look. Leslie? Dick, as you've been talking about, the players have an unspoken goal to win the NCAA title for Bobby Olson. Forward Michael Wright thinks her spirit has been guiding the team, and she's always there in their prayers. One player told me, hey, when we were mad at coach, Bobby would always say, you guys only have four years with them. I have my whole life. And so she did, Dick. Yes, that's right. 47 years, she was the assistant coach at Arizona. Nightmare. Gardner misses throws. both. So Illinois, hope still alive, down by five. We're in the final minute in San Antonio. Don't need a three here. And they take the wow. two. No, Woods denies, and Gardner keeps it alive. Oh. Mast with a foul. Lauren Woods, the 7-1 center, with the eraser for Arizona. Lauren Woods coming from everywhere. The extension. He hasn't blocked a single one out of bounds. Remember, it was Lauren Woods' first game back at Storrs, Connecticut against UConn when he was called for goaltending on what appeared to be a terrific game-saving block. Lauren Woods has battled all the way back now to the regional final in San Antonio with a chance to send his team to the Final Four. Gardner hits this free throw. It's 79-70. Three, and this is very big because if made is a three possession game. Oh, by the way, that was six blocks now for Lauren Woods. Now the Illini must think three. Well, they've got the greatest one right here in Corey Bradford. Who can play some defense on him? Gardner. Who can set a screen for him? I step out Lauren Woods. The fire, the three, it's there. Corey Bradford under some defensive duress over 7-1. Woods hits again. Here come the Illini. The three-point shooting of Bradford, of Frank Williams, of Harrington. Get the ball to, they're not going to foul. 
Arenas. Finish it off if Woods can. Mass comes back to make the foul. Will it be intentional? They're saying no. Well, they have not called a single intentional today. He went for the ball, did Mass, and that'll send Woods, the best free throw shooter, to the line. Looking deep against the press. Great aggressive basketball. Richard Jefferson in pleading with the referees for the intentional foul. And Woods that soft touch has 15 points. Next Saturday, 542 tip off after the four o'clock pregame activities. Arizona or Illinois against Michigan State and then Duke and Maryland in the ACC battle and based on their games during the regular season that'll be some match. Terrapin Station there in one game between the ACC with Maryland. Williams walking in uncontested for the two to make it a four point game 82 78 and then the quick foul. So no time uh, consumed there 21 seconds left. Move the ball if you're Arizona. Don't let them foul you. If you're if you're Illinois, Marcus Griffin now joins an entire team for <laughs> Illinois that well, is fouled out. And are they all the front court guys? We talked at the outset about how Bill Self doesn't mind his guys fouling, but does he have anybody left? Who, who, who's out? Well, Johnson's That's out. That's a front court. Demir Kripalia That's is out. A front court. Brian Cook is gone. That's a front Sergio court. Sergio McLean is starter gone. Court. Starter Marcus Griffin gone. That's a front court. Starting front court. Seven points for Illinois, seven so, total, 15 fouls. So six guys. That's the starting front court. Well, and then Johnson, Kripalia, and Archibald have all fouled out. So the top three front court reserves. So their top six guys in the front court have all fouled out. But can Arizona make free throws down the stretch? Now well, this is what you work on from the very first day of practice, isn't it, Bill? You, you, you start with free throws. Often that's how you end a practice with free throws when you're tired. And now uh, it routine. either bears fruit or you give the other guys a chance. The routine, Arizona's 38 for 50. 50 free throws for one team on the afternoon. And Walton Cooley hits another with that fall-in free throw technique. Luke Walton, who spent a lifetime on the backyard court working with UCLA legend Greg Lee on knocking down pressure free throws, with Greg Lee calling the Dick Enberg commentary. 84-78. <laughs> Quickly, it's Illinois to the other end. They need two threes to tie. Williams gets one of them with 14 seconds left. Phenomenal. Illinois has no timeouts left. And they have to foul immediately. 13.2 seconds, so still time, but a two-shot opportunity here for Arizona, and this one out of two makes it again a two-possession game. What an incredible rivalry between these two schools, and give Lou Olson a lot of credit because he knew that as soon as Bill Self got this job that, you, that the NCAA title was going to go through Illinois. The scheduling of Illinois at the United Center in Chicago even though Arizona lost that game in a just a terrific double Gardner play. misses the first. Now hope for Illinois. If he misses here, a three-pointer will tie. Big, big 18th point for Jason Gardner. The hurry up for Illinois. Williams. Rebound Woods. He is fouled immediately. Finally, a defensive rebound for Lauren Woods. Finally, a man willing to stand tall and snatch a rebound with bodies coming over your back. That's what champions are made of. Brett Melton, a distant relative to Bill Melton, the former outstanding Major League third baseman, inserted because uh, Illinois, out of big men, committed the foul with 5.7 seconds left. You would be the tallest guy on the floor for Illinois at this point, Dick, with their six top big men having already been banished to the bench for fouls. Look at Arizona starting to celebrate as Wood hit, Woods hits the free throw. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Lauren Woods for Arizona with 17 and six big blocks and Robert Archibald the game of his Illinois life with 25 for Illinois. And Woods again showing why he is the team's top free throw shooter and maybe the best big man 
free throw shooter in the nation. It's from outside, Melton misses, and Arizona is on its way to Minneapolis.